All right, a lot of conversation on Twitter about pure progression. So I had somebody ask me to dive into it a little bit deeper, so I thought I'd dive into it a little bit deeper. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start with these six questions over here on the left-hand side. Okay, so these are, uh, to me, some of the issues that I have with pure progression. First one, what's open? Okay, because everybody has a different idea. If we're just looking at a receiver and we have to decide if he's open, what tells me if he's open? I want a coach to explain that to me. Tell me what's open. If I'm a quarterback and you're teaching it to me, tell me what open looks like because what you see and what I see can be different. So that's one of the things that I have a problem with. The timing of the routes. So I want to make sure that in the progression or with my five receivers that I can actually get to one on time, two on time, three on time, four on time, and five on time. Makes no sense to me if the number one receiver and the number four receiver have the same timing on their routes because it's impossible for me to look at one then and wait for to see if he's going to be open and then get all the way back to four and be on time. So oftentimes when I see these routes, uh, they don't connect from the timing of the routes. We'll talk about what that means. Timing within the routes, okay? So if I'm looking at a guy to decide if he's open or not, when do I move on from that guy? When do I decide he's not open anymore and I move on? That, you know, to me is, is a hard one because if that's true, then you've got to figure out when do I get to the number two because where is the window going to be for the number two? And then where's it going to be for the number three? So how long do I get to stay within a particular route uh, on this? Different zones. Okay, who's the conflict player? That to me is what a good concept is. Against zone coverage, we're trying to put somebody in conflict. So I know as uh, a quarterback who I'm reading. Okay, so I, I know exactly where I need to go and that guy is gonna have to tell me because he can't cover both. Okay, number four and number five. If we've got a pure progression, the question I always ask is how often do you get to number four and number five in your progression as a quarterback? I'm gonna say not very often. So to me, if you're gonna make a pure progression and you're gonna have a four and a five on it, we're gonna waste two guys. Why not take those two guys and put them in their own type of concept? Connect them together for a particular look, for an alert, because otherwise we're just wasting them most of the time just saying, hey, go run over here, even though I'm not really looking at you because I can't get there, I don't have time to get there. And then the last one, when the difference between pure progression to me and defender read is that in defender read, I can read two guys at one time. So basically my number one is two different receivers because I'm basing it off of what a defender does. Defender does this, Certain guy becomes number one. Defender does something else, a next guy becomes number one. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then best look side. In pure progression, there are going to be times that one side is better than the other. Pure progression says, oh, I can't do that. I got to read it one, two, three, four, five. And then, uh, you know, if you, you have defender read or full field read, you can go to the best look side. And, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to shrink these questions down here, but those are my big six questions okay and i'm gonna draw up just a couple uh pure progression plays that i know a lot of people run and we'll just kind of talk through what i'm talking about uh, with that okay so uh first one i'm gonna draw up is i'm just gonna draw up stick okay so flat and a stick and then what i call pop so it's this this and this Okay, so a lot of people run this particular play, and the way it's read out is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so again, I have to answer the question, what's open uh, at some point in time? The timing of the routes. So here's what I'm talking about. You'll notice that the timing of the X on the backside, the stick at five yards, is the exact same timing that you would throw the Y on the pop, or the Z on the pop, same depth on the routes, same timing on the route. So if I'm trying to get to number two on time, it's impossible for me to be to number three and to number four on time uh, if I'm reading it pure progression. So what that means is that if I'm looking at the stick and the Z on the other side gets to his pop location and I'm not there yet with the time to throw it, there's a chance for the defenders to squeeze to it, to jump it, the corner on the outside to jump it before I get there. And so I never want to have the same depth uh, on the routes. I wanna make sure that 
it would be different. And so, you know, just for this example, what would I do? Okay, so the X is running at, we'll say six yards right here. So I'm gonna put the Y at eight yards. Then I'm gonna put the Z at 10 yards. So if I'm gonna run this pure progression, I want to make sure that I can be on time uh, to, to every one of these. And so I'm hitting them right as they're coming out of the break, which gives me the best advantage to be successful against a defense. Okay, so that's what I mean by the timing of the routes, okay? Uh, timing within the routes, okay? So the question becomes, when do I move on, okay? When do I get to the next guy? How long do I stay with a guy before I decide if he's open or not? Because again, that's going to affect the big picture timing of knowing exactly, okay, is it when the X gets one step out of his break? Oh, do I get it three steps out of his break? Uh, you know, all of those different things, and this one isn't as prevalent as some of the ones that I'll talk about uh, throughout this. Different zones and the conflict player, okay? Now, this one is not terrible from that perspective because I do believe this one, we have people that we can put in conflict on this play. So I really like this play as a whole. I don't like it as a pure progression, but I like it as a whole because it does have the ability where I could use this play, this exact play, as a full field read type play okay four and five are rarely involved we'll talk about that in a second and then read two guys at once or best look side okay so we talk about this and uh bottom line is let's just for the sake of the drill let's just drop this down to a cover three look okay so uh, you know this is kind of what what i'm talking about so cover three look Okay, we can read this pure progression and we can read one, two, three, four, five, just how I have it drawn up here. But here's what I would do and why I think I can make this better. So let's just say we're gonna read this pure progression and we snap the ball and the wheel linebacker covers the flat and the Mike linebacker covers the stick and the Sam linebacker covers this pop and the free safety covers this pop. Okay, so let's just say that's how it plays out based on the structure of the defense. That's saying on this particular play, I've got to get all the way to number five. I've got to get all the way to number five to get the open guy, okay? So I've got to make sure I have time on a quick throw and a quick protection to get all the way back to number five, okay? So that's how pure progression would treat it. Me, and this is what comes into play here, uh, down here at number six, where it says you can read two guys at one time or best look side. So when I do defender read stuff, I'm trying to put a guy in conflict and I can read basically two players at one time. So I come up here as a quarterback and this is not progression read for me, but I've given you the same play. You've got stick, pop, in which you want to read. And we come up and they're in this defense. What I'm gonna tell my quarterback is, I want you to split the field in half. Okay, I'm going to split the field in half. And what we're going to look at is, okay, how many underneath defenders do you have to the left side? Well, we've got two. We've got the Will and the Mike. How many underneath defenders do you have to the right side? I have two, the Sam and the free safety. Okay, so now I'm going to tell my quarterback, you know, right, that the right side you have three receivers. Left side you have two receivers okay so boom take the best look side you don't have to read this pure progression i want you to pick the best side where it's going to give you an opportunity to succeed boom now i'm over to the right hand side and i've only got three guys that i have to deal with i don't have to ever get to four and five on this because i have the advantage to the right hand side because they have two defenders i have three receivers okay that's one part second part of it is how am i going to read this if I'm reading it based on a side. Well, I'm going to always read this. I'm gonna say flat. I'm gonna say outside in, okay? Although I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a sec. But I'm gonna read outside in. So let's just say the exact same defense covered it the same way that we talked about before. Will covers here, Mike covers here, Sam covers here, free safety covers here. And in the pure progression, we were gonna throw it to the flat who was number five. Okay, when I split this in half because I know I have an advantage to the right-hand side, look what happens. 
The open guy is my number one read. I don't have to get all the way to number five. I got him at number one and we're good to go. We're out the gate there, okay? Also on the bottom, six, okay? It says best look side. That's what I just talked about. I'm taking the best look side. I've got three on two over here. I got two on two on the other side. I'm going to the three on two because they can't cover it. They can't be right. I will be successful every time if I read it correctly. And then it says I can read two at one time. What does that mean? That means I am reading the flat and the pop at the same time. I don't know who's going to be open. I'm not looking at the flat to see if it comes open and then move into the pop. I'm reading this defender right here. What does he do? Does he go screaming to the flat? Boom, I'm right back into my pop from there. Now, of course, if he goes to the flat and I go to the pop and this Sam takes it away, then I'm gonna work inside. But in essence, how this really works is this really becomes one, one, and two. So now I'm really just going through two progressions. Pure progression, got to go all the way to five. When I split the field in half and pick the best look side, I'm really having two progressions in here. This, the game has just become astronomically faster because it's boom, outside, and then to the inside guy, I'm reading two guys at one time, giving me advantage on this particular play. So that's kind of what I'm talking about in the essence of the difference between a full field read and a pure progression read. And you know, this can hold true for anything we want to do. And now there are going to be times, like every play is not good against every coverage. So let's just say, okay, for the sake of the drill, they dropped to cover two, okay? They dropped to cover two here, okay? So as you see, we've got five guys in the underneath zones. They've got five defenders in the underneath zones. Okay, so we don't gain an advantage anywhere here, you know? So I'm assuming the mic's gonna be pushed to the strong side because our back's there. And so in essence, I'm looking at this and go, oh, they got two on two to the left. They've got three on two to the right. Now, what do I wanna do? Okay, so again, I'm going to pick a side and I'm going to pick the left side here simply because of leverage and where we're going, okay? Because my X is actually pushing up and breaking out with this wheel linebacker should be tucked inside of him. And so that's my best leverage side because on the right side, I'm running right into where the zone cover guys are. So that would be my best look side. But even so, I have no problem if you go, okay, if you don't know, if you don't have an advantage to one side or the other, then go ahead and read this pure progression. Go ahead and start left and read it back to the right um, and go ahead and do that because we don't have an advantage. Okay, but anytime we get an advantage, so let's pop these guys back to cover four. So we're basically looked at three, two, and four. So now we look at this and what do we say? What I say is you have an advantage to either side, quarterback. Which side do you like better, right? We've got three on two to the right with the Mike and the Sam. We've got two on one to the left with the wheel linebacker. We've got an advantage either side. Pick your best look side. What do you like better? What do you want to throw? Go ahead and work that and work accordingly. Okay, so that in essence is how I would read that particular play. Okay, let's pick another one that I know is a common play that a lot of people run in the pure progression world. So they're going to run corner route here, out route or flat route there. Going to run the cross here going to run the post curl here and going to run the swing over here. Okay. So now, okay. Again, we go back to the questions. Okay. And again, what's open. That is going to be a general question. That's always going to be laid out there. Okay. The timing of the routes. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. The timing of number one here is in essence, the exact same timing of number four here. Okay. So again, I would always go high to low. Some teams do this the opposite and they would go low to high. So they would go F to X to Y to Z. But to me, it's really hard to set on a shorter route and then try to work up to that deeper route. So I always like to read deep and then it's easy to have my footwork to the deep one and then come off to the short one. But the timing of number one is the same as timing of number four. 
So how can I possibly see number one, get out of its break and see if he is open and then still get to number four on time? It's impossible to do. It's impossible to do unless you just, you, you don't wait until he gets open, which again, would come back to what I'm talking about. That wouldn't be the pure progression idea. If I'm going to eliminate things ahead of time, that's what I'm talking about. I can eliminate routes and I can get to the best, uh, the best read that I have available, okay? So uh, that's the first thing, the timing of the routes. Okay, the timing within the routes. Okay, I'm, I'm always gonna ask you, where are we throwing this? Okay, wh- where do we throw this route? Where is the timing? Am I replacing the wheel linebacker? Am I hitting it over the tackle? Am I hitting it over the the middle of the ball? Am I hitting it further over? Why is that important? Because it's important to know where I'm going to hit it because I need to get there. I need to get my eyes there in time to see it. And this is what happens on film so often is coaches go, oh, look, this guy's open. He's open right here. And then the next time he's open five yards earlier or he's open five yards later, but, but he's open. And you're saying, well, how do I know when he's going to be open? How do I know when I need to get there? How long do I get to stay on number one before I have to get to number two? And then I got to get to number three because I got to be at number three at the right time, but I don't know what the right time is because that guy is open at different times on different plays because he's, there's nobody in conflict, right? Which takes us to number four. There's nobody in conflict uh, with this cross, this Y cross here. Okay, we don't have a high low. We don't have somebody underneath him or over the top or clearing out somewhere over there. So we find ourselves in problems there. Okay, the four and the five, we talk about that. Can we get all the way back to the four and the five? And then reading to best look side, all of that stuff. Okay, so I'm going to uh, erase this and I'm gonna draw it up again. Okay, so corner, out, cross. Boom, boom, okay? So let's take the coverages. So I'm gonna put the best coverage for this uh, right off the bat, okay? So I'm gonna go cover two right here, okay? So it's the best cover in cover two because again, pure progressions, they're not, every element of the pure progression isn't terrible. Uh, It's just when you put it all together, I don't like it. And and when you put it all together saying, I've got to look at this first and then get to that. Okay. So we'll talk about that, but this is a perfect coverage for uh, a perfect play for cover two, because I do have a guy in conflict. This play has worked out perfectly where I have a guy in conflict right here. Okay. So I can come out and I can, again, we're going to tell a guy to read uh, the underneath guy and then work to the high guy or read the corner and then go to the underneath guy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to read this corner. So again, what you notice in, in my read is it's one and one. Both of these guys are number one. I'm coming back. Yes, of course, my footwork is going to be to the deeper one, but I'm reading this corner as I go back. So this corner goes and takes the deep one. I'm throwing the out. Okay. This corner stays down. I'm throwing the corner on time, but I've got the high low and I'm reading the defender. Okay. Defender read versus pure progression. Now, if coaches tell you, Hey, we run pure progression, but we read defenders. Okay. I can live with that at times because that's how I would always do it. As long as we're reading defenders, that to me is what gives you uh, a definitive answer on where you're going to throw the football. So cover two, I should have an answer over here to the left-hand side and should never have to get to three, four, uh, and five on this particular play, okay? Let's go to cover four, okay? Cover four right here. Um, We got cover four. I can live with this play against cover four as well, okay? But again, it's how we're going to read this. So if I get cover four, I'm expecting the corner to be dead. So the way I'm going to read this particular play, if I'm reading it, I'll peek the corner, And as long as the corner goes back and does his job, which I expect him to do, okay, my eyes are coming right to this guy, okay? So the X here isn't even really number one because I don't think I'm going to get him. I'm just going to verify that the corner does that. And then my number one is going to be here. And I could even say this is going to be 1A, but for the sake of the argument, we'll say this guy's going to be number two. And so what I'm saying is at this point, all I'm doing is I'm coming back, verified that the corner did his job and he stayed deep. So I'm reading 
this will linebacker. My eyes go right to this will linebacker. I'm not looking to see if the F is open. I'm reading this will linebacker. This will linebacker stays tucked inside. Boom, I'm throwing it to the out. Every time it's a given, it's done. If this will linebacker comes screaming over here, then what am I doing? I'm going right to my Y cross because he's finding the zone that's there that's been voided by the will linebacker because I don't ever expect this Mike linebacker to, uh, to, to run to the weak side, okay? So again, I'm reading a defender and this defender is telling me right now because he's got to go right now. He's telling me right now that he's voided that. Now I can get back to the cross with plenty of time so I'm ready to hit it right when he gets past the mic or maybe a little bit later or whatever that is, but it comes back to a defender read based off of the coverage that I'm seeing, okay? Now, the next element, okay? Now let's go to cover three, okay? So sake of it, let's drop this strong safety down here, okay? And now we've got this, okay? Now, okay, for me, as, uh, you know, pure progression, we're going to read the same way, right? We're going to go uh, one, two, three, four, five, okay? That's pure progression. But I'm going to say, okay, if they do what they're supposed to do on this defense, corner stays deep, covers the corner. Sam Strong Safety is outside the F, he covers the F. Will is sitting there in the zone. He covers the cross, okay? Mike Linebacker is held off here by the Y as you expect him to be held off because the guy's coming right at him. He holds inside. And then the Sam is the guy and the one guy on this play that we have in conflict. We have him to have to cover the curl or the swing here, okay? So in pure progression, you've got to get all the way to number four, possibly number five, because again, we're reading this as bodies. We're coming back and going, is the corner open? No. Is the out open? No. Is the cross open? No. Is the curl open? No. Let's say they do that and it comes all the way back to the swing. We've got to get all the way back to the swing. What I'm doing as a guy that reads the full field is I'm saying, once again, that corner is not open because the corner's responsibility is deep. He is not going to be open on this play. I'm not even looking at him. Okay. What I might do is see this strong safety. If this strong safety is outside of the F right now, I'm gonna chalk it up and go, he's not open. I'm gonna go right back to my Sam linebacker on this play. And I'm going to say, I'm reading the Sam linebacker right now. I'm dropping back uh, my seven steps because it's seven steps timing. Okay, I'm just making sure that the mic is held off for a half a second. And then I am throwing this on time off of the Sam linebacker. Does he want to drop and cover the curl? Does he want to go cover the flat? Doesn't matter. He can't be right. But that has just become, for me, one and one. I have chalked everything else off. This can be an alert. Okay, I have no problem with this being alert. Let's say the strong safety is dropping down high and late in cover three. No problem. I've alerted that to that side because I know a perfect look against that. He comes down late. Will Linebacker is tucked inside because that's his responsibility. Boom, I can take the F because I can peak this F and still get back to the Z and the T on time if it's not there. This guy comes screaming down, takes it away. Boom, I know I'm right back to the curl flat because that is the read I want against cover three. So I'm eliminating all this time. I'm eliminating all this effort. I'm finding the guy that's in conflict and I'm attacking him. Now, if you want to say, well, I got this pure progression play, but we read it as defender read, just like I talked about cover two, it's the high low on the left-hand side. Cover four, we're going to read the wheel linebacker, okay? And then cover three, we're going to read the front side, Sam linebacker, curl to swing. I can live with that, but that's not pure progression anymore. That is full field read, putting somebody in conflict, knowing where your guy in conflict is, and eliminating people where now I get two guys to be one, or I get one guy to be one and two based off of what a defender does, that to me is the difference between pure progression and defender read full field, okay? So let's go with one more that becomes really popular, okay? So let's do this, and this can be run different ways. Let's do the out here, okay? Then let's run the drive concept right here and this guy working out here, okay? So 
here we go once again. Okay. Timing of the routes. Again, I want to make sure that the timing works together. So it depends on your depth of this F. I like to put them at you know, five, six yards because then my timing works out better for each of these. But I will say that this, uh, this shallow and this dig are going to be same timing throws. And they may even tie into, if you're running this guy, this F on a corner, they may all tie in together. So timing can be off uh, on this particular play. So timing can be off because the corner, uh, the shallow, the end can all be at the same timing, which becomes obviously really, really important to make sure that I'm doing this on time. But, um, you know, but again, let's, let's, let's move on and talk about the conflict players. Okay, so let's start with uh, cover two here. Okay, it's like we did the last time, we'll start with cover two. Okay, and so, uh, you know, one thing that I, that I talked about is how um, the different zones or the conflict player, um, you know, that's one of those things where you, you'll notice on this particular play that everybody is going to a different zone. And so that oftentimes plays into it um, is that you have everybody go into a different zone. And so uh, defenses have guys a lot of times in those different zones we're talking about. So here, cover two, okay? Safety should take the go route there. Corner's in a position to take away this F on the out. Will linebacker is sitting here. Mike linebacker is sitting in the middle to take away the in. And then the Sam linebacker to the corner are in position to take away uh, the sneak by the back. Until we got guys in every position to take it away because we're not necessarily putting anybody in conflict. Okay, so let's take this and let's go to cover four. Okay, so we drop this back here. Okay, so we go here and now, okay, we're in a similar position to what we talked about on the last play. I expect the corner to cover the go, so I'm gonna verify that. And now I'm in a great position to work this will linebacker, okay? So again, I'm not gonna read this, you know, one out here, two, three, four, five. I'm not gonna do that, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to read this based off of the coverage. So can verify the corner all I want because I've got time to do that as I'm coming out to see uh, to get ready to throw the out. But once I verify the corner, then my eyes go to the wheel linebacker. Will linebacker tell me, you go buzzing out to take the out, boom, I'm ready to replace it with the shallow, okay? You stay tucked inside here, I'm throwing the out. So I've eliminated the timing of that aspect of things, okay? So that's quarters. I, I should have an advantage over here to the left-hand side, and then we can work from there. Will linebacker takes that. If the mic chases the shallow, now I should be in a pretty good position uh, to work uh, this in. And if this Sam takes the in, then I drop the sneak and vice versa, okay? But again, we always got to look at everything. So we're going to drop it down to cover three right here. And so now what are we doing in cover three, okay? Cover three, once again, just like in cover two, we've got guys to take away everything. Will linebacker takes away the out, corner obviously takes away the go, Sa strong safety is there to take the shallow, Mike is there to take the in, and the Sam is there sitting outside to take away that sneak that's working outside. So again, pure progression, and a lot of times we'll say, well, the Z is gonna run a shallow and he's gonna read where that strong safety is and he's gonna sit it down and find the hole. I get it. Ran this play a million times, had great success on this play. But again, I don't want to depend on my guy reading it right. I don't want to depend on us just beating a defender with a throw as opposed to I want to make sure I get somebody in conflict. Okay, so just with this concept alone. Okay, so Kurt, okay, I get what you're saying. How would you change this to make it more of what you're talking about? Great question. Okay, so I'm just going to make one slight adjustment on this play, and I'm going to show you what it's going to mean to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do on this play, I'm going to keep the Z on his shallow read. Okay, actually, I really did, wouldn't even want to do that. I'm going to make I'm going to make two adjustments on this play. 
Ah, forget it. Back to one, okay? I'm just going to try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to go ahead and put that shallow read on there. And then this Y, instead of running him on a basic, okay? So what a basic is, is usually going up 12 to 14 and then coming in, okay? What I'm going to do on this play, instead of doing that, is I'm going to run this Y on what I call a big end, okay? So I'm going to run him on a big end. So that means I'm going to push a little bit wider. I'm going to push this up to about 16 and roll to 18, okay? So that's the major change I'm going to make on this play. And then the secondary change is going to be I'm going to check the back and I'm going to let the back go to the hook area. I'm not going to let him leak out. I'm not going to let him swing out to the flat. I'm going to let him go to the hook area, okay? So why are we doing that, okay? So let me take you back to uh, all these different looks, okay? Okay, so we've go, we're going to start with cover two, okay? We're going to start with cover two here. So cover two, okay? Don't like it on the back side. Safety to take away the go. Corner to take away the out. The wheel is there to take away the shallow. So that one little change that I made, it keeps the Y wider. It makes him run a, a, an in, and he's going to be attacking the deep hook area of the field, which is important. I don't want him coming in to attack this kind of inside middle area. I want him to stay out on the hook area. Then the T, I put him in the wide hook area, so I developed an area of conflict here that I can use against every coverage that I need to use it against. So I get cover two here, okay? My eyes are coming right out here right now because I know I'm dead to the weak side. I'm gonna just peek this Mike linebacker, okay? This Mike linebacker, I get him to hesitate at all. In other words, not pushing all the way through the hook area, which he shouldn't do because it's not his responsibility, okay? So right off the bat, I just peek the mic and then I am reading this Sam defender. Now this Sam defender can't be right. Does he get depth? I throw the hook. Does he stay down? I throw the in up over the top of him before that guy gets to the Mike linebacker and I've got a high low right there. I have put somebody in conflict on this particular play. I've been able to eliminate three guys on this and have an answer for that cover two. Okay, let's go to, to cover four. Okay, cover four on this particular play. We already talked about this. Verify the corner, he covers deep. Now I know on this play, this is my guy in conflict. So right off the bat, verify the corner, then I'm right to the wheel linebacker. What are you gonna do? Go take the corner, stay here on the shallow. What are you gonna do? Here's my guy in conflict, I've made the game easier, okay? Even though that would be my number two and number three receiver anyways, uh, on the pure progression, I know exactly where I'm going with this defender, and basically those two guys become one and one A for me uh, because I'm reading off this defender, and this defender can't be right, and so uh, I'm able to isolate that defender and move on. Okay, so now let's go to cover three. Dropping down to cover three right here. Closed. Okay. Once again, I don't have anything to the left. Sam is, strong safety is outside the F. Will is sitting there for the shallow. Once again, I'm going to be able to get a conflict player right here. I don't know, Sam's probably going to push out as we push out and get outside of this. So my conflict player is probably going to be this Mike linebacker, but very good chance this Mike linebacker holds inside as we chase him with the shallow. And maybe the Sam stays tucked inside a little bit more. And I get a conflict player one place here. Okay, so I'm not running the back out, right? So I'm not running the back out to the flat on a, on a sneak where he can run into the Sam linebacker and then the Mike could possibly take away the in. I'm gonna put those guys in the same zone, just on two different levels. So we're attacking that hook defender against cover three because I know that's where I have an advantage. I don't have to go one, two, three, all the way to four and then five. I can read four and five become my one and one right off the bat based on what the Mike linebacker does right off the bat, wherever, whoever that hook defender is, as long as I'm throwing it on time and throwing it out there wider, we're in great shape. And so uh, that kind of, I shouldn't say in a nutshell because it wasn't a nutshell. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on 
here, but that's what I mean by pure progression. Those are the questions that I want to have answer. I want to understand the why and how I determine all of those things. But you can see with slight changes on these different plays, how it can become, and even some of them didn't even have to be a slight change. It could be the exact same play, but being able to speed the process up for your quarterback to read a side based on the numbers, to change the progression or get right to four and five, instead of having to go one, two, three, four, five, all makes the game easier but yes, you have to understand what you're seeing. You have to understand the basic structures of the defense, um, but there's little cheats that can tell you uh, why you're looking in certain places. It doesn't have to be, hey, what particular coverage overall is it? Sometimes it can be, is the corner off? Sometimes it can be, is it middle open or middle close? As simple as that to let you know where you're going in a progression, but that's a whole nother class right there. Uh, this was simply on pure progression. The questions that I have, why I don't like it because I believe it slows a quarterback down, makes the game incrementally harder for the quarterback because there's so many different elements that go into it where it sounds really simple. It's not nearly as simple when you have the ball in your hands.